Welcome to Fathers and Daughters, a podcast where we discuss important topics and current issues from a biblical perspective that are relative to fathers and daughters. Please subscribe and email us at fdpodcast at yahoo.com with questions or episode topic suggestions. Ready? Yeah. All right. So, welcome to another episode of Fathers and Daughters. Welcome. Please pardon my cold. I'm pretty sure you gave it to me. Probably. So, I'm a little mad about that, but so if I sound all nasally, that's why. You know what I've been noticing though listening to our episodes is that I'm a heavy breather. Okay, but I've been telling you that for years. I know, but I'm listening I to know. the episodes and you can hear me go <gasps> <laughs> But you know what's great, though, is that, like, when you come in late at night or when you, like, get up to go walk around and, like, go pee in the middle of the night, I know who it is because you get up and you go, hey. Isabel, I am your father. Why do you say it? Like, because I'm Mexican. That's, that's like Darth Vader with the Mexican accent. It's like Mexican Vader. Isabel, I am your father. That sounds more like a robot. That sounded like you're from Thailand. (laughs) You can sound me- Can you do a, a Mexican accent, you Mexican man? By the way, if you're from Thailand, welcome. We love you. We <laughs> and love if you. you're from Mexico. <laughs> we love your food. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was great. <laughs> well, before we start today's episode, I want to thank my friend Chris, who sent us a message on Facebook. He is the pastor of... Paris Valley Church. Oh, wow. And he said, I can tell that as a father and a daughter, you spent time talking together off the microphone because you're rather good at talking on the microphone. It sounds like you've been podcasting for quite a while. Oh, well, thank you. We have not. (laughs) I'm glad that we sound better than we think that we are. That's always comforting. But we do talk a lot off the microphone too, right? Yeah. I mean, I do talk a lot. Yes. Well, I'm not saying you talk a lot, but we talk a lot. I know. We spend I'm, a lot of I'm time saying together. I talk a lot. Well. Yeah. Wow. All right. Cool. Well, you're, you are a talker. You know what I mean. I mean, we, we do spend a lot of time together. So this will be the last Fathers and Daughters podcast that we have out. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs> I'm kidding. That was a joke. Um, another comment from my friend Gabby came in and she said, um, she said that she wanted to borrow the sex book that I used when I had the sexual talk with you. No. Okay. <laughs> I burned that thing. <laughs> there was a bonfire my senior year of high school where we burned all of our old homework, and I brought that sex book with me and burned it there. That was a great book, by the way. So after high school, I went to uh, junior college, and just because I was a horny teenager, I wanted <laughs> to take a class on human sexuality, and it ended up being a really good class. Yeah. I learned Yes, learned I learned a lot? a lot of good things about sex and STDs and all of the stuff that I didn't think I was going to learn that has been very helpful throughout the years. Sure. Okay, well, this episode's not about sex, um, but there's actually an amazing book. I actually own it. It's yes. called Yes to Sex, Just Not Yet, and um, it's by um, Sam Beckworth. I don't know if anyone knows who that is. I had no idea who that was, but I read his book, and it was so good, and it's literally just about, um, like, the, the tagline under it is a practical guide to sexual integrity for young adults, and this was one of the best books because it doesn't just talk about – um, like actually being in intercourse. It's about just mm-hmm. being intimate with people. It's about opening yourself up. It's about relational things. It talks about all different types of sexuality. So it's a great mm-hmm. book. I would really recommend it if you have a um, a teenager to a young adult. You, hopefully you've had the sex talk already, but it's just a really good guide into the moving forward of being an adult. Sorry, this episode's Make, not about sex, but sorry. it's a great book. Make sure you bring it up when we talk about sex, though, because that would be a great Oh, heck yeah. I have so about. many highlighted portions of that. All right. I mean, you talked about being Good. a horny teenager. I mean, we've all been there. So I have lots of highlighted stuff I'm yeah. willing to bring up. So I'm so excited about this episode, okay? Today, we're going to talk about sports. Okay. What? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about sports today. You were so excited about doing that, and that was terrifying. We're going to talk about sports because sports is not a big part of our life. Yes. So this is going to be a very short episode. So thank you for listening to episode four, I guess. Tune in next week. Tune in next week. Just kidding. Well, but even though sports is not a big part of our lives, there has been some pebbles of sports here and there in our life. I don't know, earlier today, we were just mentioning sports, and I thought it would be fun to do it today. 
Is that okay? Did you play sports when you were a kid? No. I – all right. Let me go back. Okay, go ahead. All right. Now we're going to get into like – Some deep stuff? Some deep stuff I'm because ready. I have daddy issues when it comes to some sports. Okay. But we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. First, I want to know how your week went. Oh, what, my... what did you do this week? My week was really great. Well, I started my week with lots of uh, like a really fun work planning day with all my coworkers. And we just had this really great day out where we literally planned out the entire 2020 season. I got to like really jump into some a really awesome um, like work projects this week. I had like a some really cool marketing meetings. I had some really just really fun different things that I got to do this week. And then on Saturday, I got to go to Disneyland with a few of my friends. And one of my friends' couples, they're married. And they're just a blast to hang out with because I knew them separately before they got married. Mm -hmm. And then I got to hang out with them once they are married. And it's just cool watching them love and respect each other so well. And then my other guy friend is just my best guy friend. His name's Nick. He's just the best. He's stupid and funny and gets me. And it's just great. It's weird because a lot of people question that you can have, like, a platonic relationship with a guy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, especially when you bring Christ in this situation and you're learning to just pray for each other as friends. It's just a really beautiful connection. Um, And then our friend Jordan came and hung out with us, too. So we just had a really great time. It was just really great getting to hang out with friends and and just do really fun stuff. I got to have some really, like, intentional conversations with my best friend this week, which was really good because I don't do well talking about my emotions. And Mm -hmm. she's very good at respecting that, but yet still wanting me to talk about my emotions well. So it was really, it was really good. I, yeah, it was a really good week. That's good. Yeah. And you got some bling. Tell us about your bling. Oh yeah. I got it. I got a nose piercing this week. (laughs) It hurt really bad. Yeah, it was bad, but it was like, I love it and it's fine now. It doesn't hurt that bad. I've been sneezing a lot, so that's been hurting. Like I picked a really bad time to get a nose piercing, Yeah, but we went for Friday the 13th. So it was, um, like they had $20 piercings and $20 tattoos. And I, my friends were like, we're going to go get tattoos. And I was like, okay, that's cool. I was like, well, they have $20 piercings. I've wanted to get my nose pierced for a while. Mm -hmm. I'm not really like a, a piercing person. Like I don't have a desire to put lots of things on my face but i i I googled it before and like tried to see it on different people and different body types and i was like okay i it's cute it's classic it's classy it doesn't look you know so i got it it hurt really bad getting it done and it's really weird because like the 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 side of the face that you get it on like that Mm -hmm. eye tears up it's the weirdest thing Mm. but i love it it and looks cute. I didn't tell you because I wanted to see how long it would take you to notice. And you noticed right away. That was that was really good on you, man. I notice things. You do. You notice things really like, well. Like mom gets – she's surprised when I notice every time she she's wearing a new outfit because I notice things. Because you noticed that there was money that was taken from the bank account. I didn't even notice that. Uh-huh. I just know every single outfit she owns. I'll just and... never forget the time when you came home and had mom's name tattooed on your arm. Yeah. And you didn't tell her. And I remember watching you. Like, I was at the top of the stairs at our old house. And I remember watching you come in. And she she came around and she looked over. And you kind of, like, turned your body oh, how funny. in a way to, like, that. to show – and she didn't see it at first, and then you kind of, like, rolled your sleeve up a little bit. Yeah. And you were, like, intentionally, awkwardly, like, pushing your chest out, yet turning your body in a certain way she'd see, so she'd see you. And remember she looked at you, and she's like, what the – is that? <laughs> and you were like, I got it tattooed. And she was like, I'm sorry, what? Well, she – She's she came around to she, tattoo her name on my arm. I don't think she thought you were going to actually do it, though. Like, yeah. that was what was great. She totally, I mean, it took five minutes and she loved it. But it was that initial, like, what the, is that? Yeah. And I just, that was hilarious to me. So, so yeah, I got a nose piercing. Um, I love it. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Good. And this episode is not about tattoos and piercings. But that is to come. But that is to come. I think that would be a great episode because there is a... There's a um, story behind yeah. me getting mom's name tattooed on my arm and why it took so long. And um, I'm actually going to be getting my first tattoo for my birthday. That's uh, in November, the beginning of November. Mm-hmm. So I'll be getting my first tattoo then. So who knows? Maybe we'll bring our stuff and do it while we're there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll do the podcast while I'm getting it that done. That would be cool. That'd be really neat. While so we're getting needles, like, cause I'm getting one too. Oh no way! I didn't know I'll, you actually decided to do it. Yeah, I'll, I'll do. I'll do one with you. What are you gonna get? I have no idea. Cool. 
but I'm excited but, you're going to do one with me. Good. I think it would be fun to like record while our bodies are being punctured and ink is being injected. Yeah, I'm not looking us. forward to the to the needling. It doesn't hurt. That's crap. That's what they told me about my nose, and then I screamed the F word while they put a needle through my face. Like, there's a hunk Language. of flesh. There's a hunk of flesh that they stuck yeah. through my nose. Yeah. Of course, yeah, it was, I asked for forgiveness right. afterwards, but it was a thing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, how was your week? My week was <clears throat> fun. We both had fun weeks. That's, I was, that's so good. Unfortunately, I was away from home. So I got to go on this conference for work. And I was gone for three days. I don't like being away from home because I like being home. And typically when I go to conferences, it's just something that I need to do. Mm -hmm. And mom tells me to have fun. And I tell her, well, you know, it's just work. But this conference was actually fun, which is weird. Oh, it's so good. When I go away for work, I typically go away with guys. And whenever we go out... They want to go to a place where they can watch the game yeah, or go look for a brewery or, you know, guy stuff. And I'm not into that stuff. Sure. And this time I went with two female coworkers and most of the participants at this conference were women. And I got to play Bunko for the first time. Did you love it? I thought it was fun. Yeah. Oh, I, so I wasn't good. sure about it, but it included free drinks. So I'm like, you know, I'll... <laughs> I'm like, I'll do anything that gives you free drinks, right? I'm sure Bunko got a and, lot more interesting. Oh, it was it was interesting and loud. I didn't win anything. Some girl won three hundred dollars. Oh my gosh! But it was cool. I also won a raffle price. I a, saw that. It was a big basket that I had to disassemble so I can get it in the plane with me. But it was fun. When you told me that you like had to carry it on the plane, I just pictured you like just hauling this thing in between seats, like knocking it around on people's heads. I put everything that was wet, I guess, like the wine and the spreads, liquid. I put it in my suitcase, and my suitcase was half a pound. um, Away from being too uh, heavy? Away from being too heavy. Weren't you scared it was going to, like, crack all over your clothes? Very. So I wrapped it in plastic bags, like double plastic bags, and wrapped it in T-shirts that I didn't care if they got ruined. Uh Uh-huh. That way they were padded. But these new suitcases that we got are the hardcover, so I think that helped. Oh, that's so good. But that's how my week went, and everything got home safe, and I got home safe, and I actually had a good time. Good. I'm really glad. I love when I hear that you are enjoying your job. And what's really cool is that I always try to take mom to work events. Yeah. Because I want her to know my coworkers, and she is not weird that I spend time with my female coworkers. (laughs) Obviously, our relationship is a little bit different, and we'll go more into that later, (laughs) but I'm glad that she... She trusts me now, and um, she knows the people that I hang out with yeah. at work. And that, There's a level of respect there, That too. makes it a lot easier to to say, all right, I'm away for work, but there's no reason why I can't have a little bit of fun, even if I'm not home. And you always, like, and just to put this out there for people who are listening, like, you're so good about making sure that you're always being in communication with her all day. Like, even when you're out of town, you know, her phone will pop up with just messages from you, and it's really sweet the way yeah. you – continue that that um level of conversation even though you're not home well i i had to yeah I mean, it, it was a big learning curve oh i'm sure and yeah it's a good example for me too like regardless of you know if i'm dating and they're away or if um i get married and he travels a lot or whatever like it's just good it's a good example to see that regardless of where they are in the world that level of communication always has to be there yeah so I love no that. i i agree love it all right Let's uh, let's talk about sports. Can you stop doing that? That is so irritating. <laughs> you know how old you are. Uh, all right. Oh my gosh. All right. So you asked me about. You yeah. Me tell about me about your. Sports. Tell me about your childhood with sports. Right. Do you, can I tell you what I know about your childhood with sports? Sure. Really quick? Let, tell me what you know, and then I'll. I'll elaborate. The on only it. thing I don't like, th- this is the only thing that I know about it was that when I said I wanted to play sports, when I was a kid, you said, you can play whatever you want. We're not playing soccer. Uh huh. And I was like, what the heck, man? What if I want to play soccer? And you were like, you will not play soccer. So that's the only thing I know. And I have a feeling it has something to do with your childhood. Yeah. So I grew up with a dad who liked soccer and boxing. 
boxing? In boxing. Oh, weird. And every time the soccer game was on or the boxing match was on, uh, that was my dad's first priority. And it did something to me emotionally. Yeah. So i rather watch paint dry or ice melt than sit down and watch soccer or participate or learn about or be involved in soccer. And it's the same thing with boxing. I'm sure we'll talk more about my dad in future episodes because my childhood made me who I am, good or bad. And my dad and I now have an okay relationship. And uh, we talked about some of these things and there's been forgiveness, but facts are facts, right? And what you learn from this is that your relationship with your father growing up really affects who you are as an adult. And knowing that I made it a point of being there for you. Yeah. And I was very thankful that I was able to have a job that allowed me to be there for you at all your events. Yeah. Because that was important for me. I grew up in a neighborhood in Mexico where where we used to go out and play on the streets and we used to play baseball and tag and hide and seek. So I was always outside moving around but I was never good athletically and the primary school that I went to didn't really have sports so when I came to school in the United States I didn't have any experience playing sports so I didn't really get involved in that plus I was a little fat kid who didn't know English so it was very hard for me to get involved in those clubs or sports activities that a lot of the kids that were here already yeah. made that an important part of their lives. In addition, my mom used to come and pick me up every day, and there was no time for me to stay after school, you know, just do practice and then walk home. That was not our life. So I never really got into that. Uh, every time we did sports uh, during PE class, because I had no athletic ability, I was always thrown to fill in the goalie spot or you know the position that didn't really get much play so there was a lot of animosity towards sports and still now I'm not really interested in sports when we're at work or with friends and people start talking about sports I totally check out because it doesn't interest me but I know that sports teach good fundamentals like teamwork and responsibility and um just not giving up and all these things. And I wanted you to experience some of that. I think that's when we started looking into softball. And that's when you started playing. So tell us a little bit about you growing up playing sports. So I started playing softball when I was in like fifth or sixth grade, like going into middle school. No, man, I was younger than that. Man, I started playing when I was fourth or fifth grade. Um, cause I played for, you were little. I played for Very quite little. a few years mm-hmm. and I think more than anything, like when I started playing softball, I sucked at it. I was very aware of how bad I was, but I started with really just down to earth coaches who were family friends. I mean, one of my coaches lived across the street from me, uh, mm-hmm. with my best friend's dad and we, it, it was great because we could carpool and we had a sports field that was literally like three blocks from our house, right? which was so incredibly helpful. And I wanted to do sports because softball was the cool thing to do at the time. Because we lived three blocks from a field, three blocks in the other direction was our school. Like it, we didn't have a dance studio that was around the corner. We didn't really have a athletic center where they did cheer or whatever. That wasn't a thing. They didn't build the community center at our park until after I was finished playing softball. So there wasn't right. any opportunity to do that. For all the kids who I went to elementary school with, it was either football or softball. Like if you were a boy, you played football mm-hmm. and if you were or baseball or if you were a girl, you played softball or soccer. And that was it. And so I was like, okay, I have soccer and softball to choose from. Let's go with softball. All of my friends were playing it and I was like, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. I better get on this I better get on this train. And, and so over the years, I played on a few teams. I learned to really love playing second base and center field. I, 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 I loved pitching. I loved the intensity of, like, the games relying on how well you perform. Mm-hmm. And I, I just – I had so many great just moments of success and failure. I remember one time we were playing a game and some girl slid into third base and broke her shin. 
that was crazy. Um, I almost pitched a perfect game one time. There was, there was a few other times I caught like the winning ball for, um, the finals championship game and it was my best friend who hit the ball. Like we were up by one point and bases were loaded and all she had to do was Mm -hmm. get someone to home plate. And I caught the pop fly that she threw Mm -hmm. or that she hit and I caught it and we won the whole game and it was against my best friend. And like, it was like, we had this really great moments in softball that I remember, I also remember having some really horrible times playing softball. There were a lot of times where a lot of girls played travel ball. A lot of girls played Mm all-star. I was not good enough to play travel ball or all-star. I was a terrible hit. Like, I could not hit the ball to save my life. I could not hit the ball. I just couldn't do it. I could catch it. I could throw it. I just couldn't hit the ball. And that's half of the game. But I loved playing softball growing up. And I think it's because it was teaching me that – yeah, like you said, learning teamwork and responsibility, all those were great qualities. It kind of taught me how to be a good loser. I'm oh, a really, yeah. really competitive person. I hate losing. I'm in a place to where if I think I might lose at what I'm doing, I won't mm-hmm. even do it. I won't try. So I hate doing yeah. things that I think I might not be good at. And that goes for a lot of different things in my life. That's not just playing sports. That's that's getting, you know, taking new jobs, being in relationships, like – if I think it's going to fail, I don't even want to jump on board. Yeah. Whether it's a romantic relationship or a friendship relationship, I'm like, if this is doomed to fail, I don't want anything to do with it. But I feel like I would have been so much worse if I hadn't played softball. I feel like it really taught me how to be a good loser. When at the end of the game, regardless if you won or you lost, you had to high five the other team. And half the time I wanted to high five these girls and, and kick slap them, them and slap them in the face. Yeah. Like we had, there was one game, and I'll never forget this. So I'll high five you on your high face. High five you in your face. Your face was on my hand, man. What happened? There was one time I remember we were playing this game against um, my best friend's ex boyfriend. Her sister was pitching, or his his sister was pitching, um, and she knew who I was because we all went to school together. Yeah. And it was a, it was his twin sister, and he was she was pitching the game, and I got up to about three different times, and she hit me with the ball mm-hmm. three different times. Um, and we were losing so bad that I went up to bat four times in the game <laughs> and, um, and she hit me on my ankle, my, that ankle bone killed. And then she yeah. hit me on my knee bone and then she hit me right on my hip, um, the third time. And I remember I went up to bat the fourth time and I, I pushed through, I was like, I'm going to chug, I'm going to do this. I had three different bruises on my leg. Mm-hmm. And I remember, I remember mom called me from the side of the, of the, the area and I went over to the gate the and dug out. No, because I was already up to bat. Oh. So it was just the field. Can you surprise how I know that word? The dugout. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> I know dugout and bullpen. When do they use a bullpen? Um, when the pitchers are getting ready and warming up. Oh, good to- job. Oh, okay. Look at that. Anyway, so I was getting up there to bat, and it was my turn to go up. And mom called me from the side of the field right behind home plate. And I go over to the gate, and she whispers to me, and she goes, if she hits you again, you will not cry. And I was like, oh, my gosh, Okay. She goes, I want you to pick up that ball, and I want you to throw it at her. <laughs> and I was like – I remember that. Oh, she's ready. And this girl hit me for the fourth time on my mm-hmm. hip. And I remember just – I didn't even flinch. I just let it hit me. And I remember looking down, and I picked up that ball, and I started to charge at her. And then my coach mm-hmm. ran on the field and was like, no, yeah. no, you can't do that. I was like, I'm going to kill this girl. So it gave me a really good, healthy yeah. – um, healthy i in quotes healthy <laughs> excuse to to exert some some anger like yeah. um i love challenging people i love learning to win i like being a winner and i'm a very competitive person so it gave me mm-hmm. a really fantastic outlet for being competitive well it's good that we didn't give you all participation trophies right no there were no participation That's trophies right. and when i lost my coach said you lost get over it and do better next time mm-hmm. My my favorite coach is actually a really good family friend of ours. His name's Rob Eckberg. If you're mm-hmm. listening, my buddy, you're you're the buddy. You were the best coach I ever had. <gasps> oh, he's gonna love the that. best coach I ever had playing softball. Um, you just you loved on us, but you told us when we messed up, and you said you messed up. Yeah, get over it and do it better next time. He was a good coach. But when we this is the difference was that every coach can tell you when you did something wrong, mm-hmm. but not every coach can celebrate you when you do something right. Hey, and I, I remember I was a coach too. You, you were a coach kinda. adjacent. Assistant coach. You sat there and cut orange slices. All right, come down. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. I'm getting to you. I'm getting to you. I promise. But I'm not as 
good of a coach as he is. You are not as good of a coach as he is because he can't be topped at all. But I remember when we won, when we did something right, I remember the first time I hit a ball past center field. Yeah. And it was the first time, and every single other girl on the team had hit a ball past center field at least one point, and I had never hit a ball past my center that center fielder. And uh, it came to the point where I got all the way to third base. And I remember getting to third base and looking over at him, and he said, I'm so proud of you. You knew you could do it. You just had to actually get up there and do it. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, Coach Rob, you're the best. I love you, man. You're super great. That's so, yeah, cool. that's sports, yeah. sports for me growing up. It was a lot of fun. But you I mean, were I, yeah, I remember we, you were at every game. Yeah. You were drove me to every practice. Um you drove me to the field on Saturday mornings to to just throw the ball back and forth mm-hmm. so I could get a hang of it. But more than more than anything, I remember countless times where you would throw the ball at me just like so a practice hitting cuz I could yeah. not hit the ball to save my life. And I remember getting so irritated and so frustrated at myself cuz I couldn't hit the freaking ball. Yeah. And I remember you just telling me, "It's all right, we're going to do it again. We'll stay out here as long as it takes." Yeah. Sometimes it took all day. Because I do like softball and baseball. I'm not a big fan, and I don't know all the players' games and the stats and everything. But that was one of the sports that I kind of enjoyed growing up just because I was in, in the San Diego area, and the Padres were our team. And as I got a little older, I started going to games with my dad. So, you know, I don't want people to think that my dad was this horrible man who didn't pay attention to me, but just – Soccer and boxing and our relationship didn't blend, but he was a butcher and he had a contract with Farmer John who provided all the hot dogs for the stadium. Oh my gosh. So um, now and then they gave my dad tickets to the game and they were right behind home plate. Oh, that's funny. Like first row behind home plate. So we, you know, we were this Mexican family sitting in between all these bougie season ticket holders but it was a blast oh, so i would freaking kill for that right yeah. now so we did have so cool. some good times watching baseball and so that's why now if i had the opportunity to go see a game baseball would be it would you watch the world series with me uh, like on tv yeah uh, i love okay i don't watch I, baseball games on tv uh-huh. but i love watching the world series that's like i i will sit and watch the world series every year i would sit and watch a world series just to spend time with you but not Aww. because i love the world series okay in fact my dad and i went to the all-star game back in 1991 or 92 oh when no way. it was in san diego so i got you really got some history i got really big into baseball but i never really yeah played and once i left the san diego area to come to college it just kind of just went away but but yeah, baseball. I'll, I'll go to a live baseball game. I don't. I won't watch it on TV. You'll do it to spend time with me. Yes, because cool. I just like the environment yeah. and I can understand the game. But and you uh, like doing all the cheers, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and doing the seventh inning stretch and yeah. eating the hot dog with the beer and just you know just being there. But that's as far as it goes. So, what does the Bible say about sports? Holla. I pew, 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 pew. I actually pulled up some stuff. We're not doing that anymore. So, I didn't think the Bible was going to say a lot about sport, but it does, kind of. So, it doesn't talk about a specific sport. It uses athletics or sports to illustrate a teaching. As, as do most pastors nowadays. Yeah. Will use sports or some sort of athletic capabilities to explain a biblical passage to help people understand it better. Yeah. So I Googled what sports were popular during the time of Jesus. Okay. Right? I found this site that says that the sports that were popular during that time was foot racing, which is probably running. Yeah. Foot racing. Archery, boxing, wrestling, and early variations of soccer. Javelin throwing, discus throwing, and the high jump. So it was a lot of track and field. A lot of track and field, Lots yeah. Lots of track and field. Um, 2 Timothy 2.5 says, And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. So, you know, Paul's using this to show that we have to follow the rules, that there is order, and not to cheat. 
Uh, First Corinthians nine twenty five. Dude, that's exactly what I was about to read. What? The First Corinthians nine twenty five. Yeah. Go. To talk read it. about it says every athlete exercises self control in all things. They do not receive it in a perishable wealth, but we but we an imperishable. So it's like I love that they're talking. They're using it as a method of self endurance, self control, and self control uh-huh. rather than the actual act of competition. And that's really what track and field is a lot of the times. Is that a lot of people that I've known who have done like long distance running they're like it's not for the the wanting to compete it's just a matter of me being able to be with my thoughts mm-hmm. while i'm running which i know is something huge for me when i exercise is that i like to i just like to be alone with my thoughts and and i don't like listening to podcasts or sermons while i run i'm like i just want to listen to music i want to be in my own thoughts i want to be in my own brain yeah i like to think about things while i'm doing that too so i also have second timothy 4 7 where uh, paul tells timothy that he has fought the good fight and he has finished the race so, you know, like you said, just like pastors today, they use sports to bring the message yeah. or illustrate what they're trying to teach. I don't think Jesus played sports. What do you think? Maybe when he was little. I don't know what kind of sports uh, I'm sure little kids played. Kids did lots of things in the streets and found ways of entertaining themselves, just, just as though we find things to entertain ourselves mm-hmm. with now. I'm sure there were things they found to entertain themselves with then. More than anything else, I'd like I'd like to focus on, um, regardless of what sport you play, it's what what are you learning from it? Mm-hmm. Uh, what are you taking away from that sport that's going to benefit you in life? And if you can't say anything, then why are you playing it? Mm-hmm. Um, or why are you why are you doing something like that? Proverbs eleven two says, "When pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with the humble comes wisdom." So I think as we as we talk about competition and, and competitiveness mm-hmm. is that mm-hmm. a lot of times that comes with pride. Mm-hmm. And something that I learned doing sports was that um, that pride got me nowhere. Mm-hmm. The pride was never going to get me anywhere. But something that Rob really taught us was that regardless if you win or if you lose, you treat that other team exactly the same. Mm-hmm. And we were not allowed to celebrate until we high-fived that team. Right. I remember that. And after we high-fived that team and we were humble and kind to them, then we could go celebrate our own. But we were not allowed yeah. to go nuts or throw faces or anything. Mm-hmm. And um, we would have, like, victory parties if we won. And I remember one time one of those victory parties got taken away because somebody yeah, – it was probably right. me. That's right. <laughs> it, it, honestly, it was probably me. was like, ha-ha, losers. And it was probably me. I won't lie. Yeah. It, I don't remember, but it was probably me. Um, said something like that and we got our whole victory party taken away and he said if you can't learn to win humbly then you don't get to learn how to win then you don't get to win well i think with that i mean proverbs put it very well is that if you can't do it with with humility and grace and poise then then you're doing it with pride and that's to be disgraced and i think that also is important with knowing how to lose or lose losing well Remember that season that you guys played where you lost almost every single game? Oh, don't even get me where started. Where they they, <laughs> they intertwined they intertwined the leagues. Oh yeah, the different and age. You the, guys ended yeah. up playing with the ghetto girls. Yeah. You know, you guys were what eight or nine, eight, nine, and ten. Yeah. And we these were girls were these, like, like high school. Yeah, we were playing with these 12, 14, 16 year olds. Yeah, and you guys got your butt handed to you guys every, every single game. game. But I think that taught you just to to enjoy the game and and. And just keep going. I remember he yeah. asked us, he said, w- we were so discouraged after losing some of these games that we were just so upset and so irritated. And he's like, well, if you're doing this just to win, then don't be here. Mm-hmm. It's like, if you're doing this to play the game and have fun, then that's what you should do. And I remember going into the game after that, like after we had lost tragically. And I remember celebrating and having such a good time the next few games because we were like, we're not here to win. We're here to have fun. We're mm-hmm. here to enjoy ourselves. And, and, and that that's the moral of it. And, and God bless my children. They're going to have it out with a mom who is going to push and strive for greatness for their children. But but just like that, I, that's what I want for my kids one day is that they, mm-hmm. they do something because they love it. And that's that's why I always appreciate that you never forced any kind of sport on me. You never forced piano. You never forced violin. You never forced track. You never forced any kind of sport on me whatsoever. It was always the will of what I wanted. And that's like that's one of the biggest things I'd like to tell parents now is that I have so many friends who were so unhappy growing up because they were being forced to do something they didn't want to do. 
I know there's a lot of parents out there that push sports on the kids. We didn't do that. I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but we didn't do that. And that worked for us. Well, mainly because I was I didn't really like sports that much, but I could have said, no, you're going to you're going to continue doing this and or you're going to do this other stuff. I'd love to tell parents out there and and I'd love for you to kind of speak into that to this, too, is that if you force something on your kids, you can't just expect them to love it. Sometimes it works out that way. And sometimes you you usher in your children into doing the thing that you used Mm -hmm. to love to do. Um, But that's not always the case. So I would just say, like, don't don't always expect that they're going to love the things that you love or that they're going to hate the things that you hate. I played a little bit of soccer when I was in college. Gross. And I loved it. It was so much cardio and it was hardworking. But I got to push and shove people because it's a contact sport. Whereas softball, not as much a contact sport. But playing soccer, I got to push and shove and kick and trip and probably did all these illegal things. But it was a contact (laughs) sport and I got to to do that because it was fun. But don't expect that because you hate it. I'm going to hate it too. And And also, you said that don't force your kids to do something. But you also have to push your kids sometimes. There's things that kids may not want to do just because they're lazy. (laughs) And you do have to push them sometimes. Not not force them to the point where they're going to end up hating what they're doing. But part of parenting is challenging your kid to finish what you started. Yeah. I don't know. I guess if you would have said, I don't want to play anymore, I would have said, no, you committed yourself. There was a season. And you're going to finish this. Yeah. You're going to finish this season or if you're going to finish playing with this team. Yeah. We'll talk about it after. But you committed yourself and you cannot bail out. Yeah. And I would say if, if you're dead set on them playing a sport, if you're dead set on them doing something, give them the option. Ask, what do you want to do? And um, do you want to do you want to dance? Do you want to cheer? Do you want to play sports? Have make it a conversation. Ask them what they want to be doing, and support them regardless of what they want to be doing. And parents get involved. Cut orange slices for the team sometimes. Yeah. Show up to the games. Show up to practices because more than anything, whether we won or we lost, it didn't mean anything to me. Just knowing that I had my family up in the stands screaming supporting you guys made buttons one year with my faces on it Mm -hmm. like i just loved knowing that i was being supported and that meant the world Mm -hmm. to me because it didn't matter what i was doing and your kids might change doing different sports sometimes they might i remember i did i did cheer i did dance i did ballet i did softball i did a wide variety of different things it it, it didn't matter it didn't matter if you were good or bad it was it was just fun it was a family thing yeah so Yes, you're right. And I want to encourage dads to spend time with your kids. Work the snack bar. Work this. I thought the snack bar was fun. Yeah, work the snack bar. I used to love doing the nacho cheese thing. The nacho cheese? Oh, yeah. That was the best. Yeah, and some people hated working the snack bar. I love it. Work the snack bar. Make hot cocoa for the team. Use your home as a way to just host your kids because that's going to mean more to the kids than anything else is just knowing that their parents are there supporting them. Yeah. Good. So it was a good conversation, sp- and I didn't think we were gonna have <laughs> a lot to talk about. I well, we always have a lot to talk mm-hmm. about. We'll expand on everything. So, yeah. thanks for listening to our uh, our sports podcast. Wait. Oh, sorry. We're gonna close with the game. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna play, or you're gonna play. I'm gonna play this or that, and why. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to choose between two things, and then you're gonna tell me what you chose that thing. Okay. Okay. Baseball or basketball? Uh, baseball every day. Why? Uh, because I played softball growing up, and I love the game of baseball. Okay. Hot dog or nachos? Nachos. That's not even a question. Ask anybody who knows me. <laughs> I will. If, if nachos are on the menu, that's what I will be ordering. Dodgers or Angels? Angels. As I'm sitting here wearing my Angels rent spooner. I'm sorry if you're a Dodgers fan. I don't really care if you don't like me anymore. Summer Olympics or Winter Olympics? Oh, Summer Olympics. I really, li- I really like the Summer Olympics because that's what we watched when I was growing up. We always watched the Summer Olympics. I don't really remember oh. watching the Winter Olympics. I just watched them because of the figure skating. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the Summer Olympics. WWE or Lucha Libre? Um, neither. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
a can I can I make that option? <laughs> I guess um, I grew up watching Lucha Libre, so my grandma and I used to go to Lucha Libre. Your grandma? Matches, I guess. <laughs> I can picture my great grandmother. Right. Oh we my used gosh, to go that's see so the funny. luchadores with their mask and. Um, you know, the, the match where if one lost, they either lost the mask or the hair and they were big and, uh, wrestling midgets. We used to go <laughs> watch wrestling midgets and that was so much fun. I, I think, just, I just picture Nacho Libre. Like that's all, that's all I picture when you talk about, when you talk about that. Nacho. Okay. Keep going. Hulk Hogan or The Rock? The Rock. <sighs> it's not even a question. I guess it depends what decade you were born in. Yeah volleyball or beach volleyball uh beach volleyball why because i'm not good enough to play real volleyball so when it's casual on the beach i feel more comfortable okay tight baseball pants or loose oh tight are you freaking kidding <laughs> like a few years ago they they're it like, was like a oh, thing yeah. to wear loose baseball yeah. pants not a fan yeah. the, the loose ones look so uncomfortable all right ready there's a good one okay tidal waves or hurricanes oh <gasps> You can't, uh, <laughs> hurricanes. Hurricanes. Okay, so those of you who don't know, those are the two, like, sports teams that I really played on when I was a kid. Hurricanes because it was Coach Rob, and I love him, and because that was the team that we won that you final champion. Won. Yeah. We won, like, every game. We won the overall outstanding championship, and it was the championship game that I caught my best friend's fly ball and caught the winning, the it winning ball. It was a good experience. So, yeah, mm -hmm. Hurricanes for sure. All right. Super Bowl or World Series? World Series. I don't do the Super Bowl. We are not football people. I'm not a football person. I don't understand football. And the only person I think who's ever actually going to sit and explain to me and I will listen will be my husband. Okay. Last one. Okay. If you watch the Super Bowl, would you watch the Super Bowl because of the commercials or halftime? Oh, halftime. I love musical performers regardless of who they are. And because half the time I'm watching the halftime show, I'm just wanting one of them to slip and fall. Mm. That sounds really mean. Because we love music. Because so we much. love music, and I just love watching yeah. people perform. And knowing that, like, I could never do that. The pressure of performing something that big that literally the entire country is watching, yeah. I couldn't handle it. Remember when Madonna almost fell? Yes. That was mm -hmm. kind of great. <laughs> I remember watching that and being like, oh. That was really great watching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. so. And then the Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake fiasco. That was so good. Well, that was so good until he ripped her top off. Yes, then... but that was so good to watch. Because you watch it and like, you're like, oh, the whole world's watching. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. I have a lot of respect for celebrities because I don't know how they deal with it. but uh, I think they get paid enough. So yeah, that's I don't great. Have... That's right. great. Anyways, so – Thank you for listening to our episode about sports. Yes. Thank you, Coach Rob. Shout out to you. You're the best. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Uh, we don't know what the next episode is going to be about again. Tune uh, in next week and find out. All right. You guys have a good week. Thank you for listening to the Fathers and Daughters podcast, a Muscat Entertainment production. For questions, comments, or topic ideas, email fdpodcast at yahoo.com. Please subscribe and tune in every week for new episodes.